Hey guys, you joined me here at the 2024 Chicago Auto Show for yet another new video and new product that I am very, very excited about. And that's the 2024 GMC Acadia and the AT4, as well as the Denali trim level. Now I will have separate dedicated videos on either of these two SUVs, but if you guys have been following the channel and you already know, I've done quite a few pieces of content uh, comparing the trim levels, the features and options, as well as the exact pricing information, because that is now available on either of these two vehicles, as well as the sister vehicle, the Chevy Traverse, which I will be showcasing again here in a separate video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and check out the GMC Acadia AT4, see what it has to offer for the mid $50,000 price point. So the KD AT4 in front of us is finished in the Summit White exterior with the unique AT4 specific interior, which is a black uh, and brown two-tone leather option. Now starting at the front end of every Acadia for this next generation, you will find LED projector headlights, daytime running lights, and turn signals. And there are also gonna be fog lights found on the corners of every vehicle as well. And you do have the front and rear parking sensors as part of some of the optional equipment group, depending on which trim level you do choose. Now in terms of the AT4 and some of its off-road gear, you will find the front red recovery hooks, which certainly stand out among some of the other black accents. You have the more aggressive uh, suspension lift as well as the off-road tires, which we'll touch on here in a second. And of course the AT4 specific badging for the front grille, which is finished in a gloss black and machined finish. There is the 360 surround view camera system. And like I mentioned, the radar for some of the other adaptive cruise controls and safety systems within the vehicle. Now coming around the side of the AT4, you really understand uh, some of the changes specific for the off-road versions of the Traverse as well as the Acadia in terms of the wheel and tire, the suspension lift, and some of the other unique drive modes. So coming to the wheels and tires, these are gonna be the AT4 specific option. They're gonna be 18 inch in size in a dark gunmetal machine finish, 265, 65, 18 inch Goodyear Wrangler territory all-terrain tires. I believe these are the same exact size that is found on certain trims of the Colorado and the Canyon as well, which is very interesting that they do fit the same size wheel and tire setup. And you will find just over an inch in terms of suspension lift and additional ground clearance on this trim level. Uh, coming around to the side, you will have AT4 specific badging on both of the front doors with, the, of course, the red accent specific to AT4, gloss black mirror caps with LED turn signal integration, the 360 surround view camera system, and then, of course, you will find gloss black roof rails up top with the uh, sunroof, which is going to be a panoramic style proximity entry on all four door handles, which is fantastic. And one element in terms of the lighting that stands out to me is the side markers on the tops of the wheel arches that are illuminating and uh, do give it a different type of presence versus that of the Denali and of course the standard elevation as well. Now coming to the back end, you will find more LED lighting in a unique signature uh, with the gloss black finish running across the center section of the tailgate. Down below you will find quad tipped exhaust, which it looks quite aggressive. They are the rectangular or square versions, rear parking sensors, all wheel drive badge. Of course, every AT4 is going to be all wheel drive. And there is the rear camera with the integrated washer nozzle. So in case you get it a little bit too dirty, just want to rinse it off, that will be an option. And then you do have the camera in the back for the digital rear view camera mirror mounted just beneath the rear spoiler. So yeah, that's gonna be a look at the exterior of the AT4. It does look very beefy, very aggressive. I really do like it. The slightly wider wheel arches here with those integrated LED lighting signatures and the GMC logo on the side of the headlamp. You guys will have to let me know down in the comment section below what you think of the AT4 or just the new next generation Acadia in general. Now taking a look on the interior of the Acadia AT4, this does have the unique one option leather interior, which does have some AT4 specific brown accents. Now starting out here on the door panel, immediately you can see some of the uh, in-cabin LED signature lighting at the top there in the blue. You will find soft touch materials at the top with some of the uh, dark gunmetal gray finishes. There's some textured materials here, very similar to that of the Colorado Z71, if you guys are familiar with that. And my video I did last year at the Chicago Auto Show, that feels like the exact same texture. Smooth finishes that are soft touch leather for the armrest with some accent stitching. Power windows, mirrors, and locks. Good amount of lower door storage and bottle holder. And there is the power tailgate release and the Bose premium audio system, which is standard. Although if you do opt for the uh, Denali with the optional equipment, you will get a slightly nicer Bose premium audio system than the 12 speaker setup on every single Acadia. There's going to be a power driver seat with four way power lumbar. There's the leather seating surfaces. They do have cloth inserts. 
There's the AT4 branding in the headrests. Cloth inserts are found on the outer portions of the bolsters. The center is going to be a perforated leather. There's a look at the dashboard. Now immediately inside of these next generation GM SUVs, they do have a slightly different layout for the infotainment system. Uh, we're here in the Acadia, it is going to be a 15 inch kind of vertical orientation where in the Traverse it is a little bit more horizontal. You can see um, we do have the Super Cruise functionality which is going to be optional with the eye um, sensor to monitor your eye movement, make sure you are paying attention to the roadway while using that. There's your audio multimedia, Super Cruise and regular cruise control functionality, heated steering wheel. Nice leather wrap, it is a very beefy diameter. There's the paddle shifters on the left and right hand side for the transmission and then there is rockers on the back as well for some of the audio and multimedia. Now to the left of the steering wheel, we'll find the electronic parking brake. It looks like drive mode select, all wheel drive uh, to enable and lock in all wheel drive. There's your engine stop start as well as your gauge dimming and illumination. 11 inch cluster in front of the driver with a 15 inch like I said, more vertical kind of square orientation for this center display with toggles at the bottom for buttons. There's your volume knob with a power in the middle, engine stop start, and more of that textured material across the dashboard with some accent stitching. A very interesting use of materials throughout the interior cabin so far upon first impression, uh, but certainly not a bad thing. AC vents are orientated and a little bit lower uh, than normal standard on the dash. There's two larger cup holders, wireless charging pad, of course, USB-A and USB-C inputs here in the center, and more additional storage space down below. Good amount of storage here in the center glove box. Now taking a look at the second row seats, most of the materials will follow through from the front. So starting out on the door panel, again, soft touch materials, more of that textured accent on the back with a smooth leather, right, leather wrapped armrest with the brown accents. I'm glad that GMC did not implement some of this textured here on the uh, armrest portion. Maybe they are listening to feedback from uh, not only myself, but other people out there that have owned some of their vehicles. Nice storage pocket here in the door as well as your Bose audio, like I've mentioned. There's the second row captain's chairs. This vehicle only does come with a seven passenger configuration, so it does have your manual recline here on the side. No mechatronic power release, which would be this button right here in the Denali, which we will showcase in that video. And then there is a manual sliding lever underneath the seat to slide the seat forward and back. Now in terms of second row amenities, you will find heated second row seats, another HVAC control, so it is a tri-zone climate. There's a 120 volt outlet two larger cup holders, mat pockets on the front seats. And then there is a look at the panoramic power sunroof with LED overhead lighting. Center armrests for both of the captain's chairs. And then one unique feature I did want to showcase here because I have had comments on the video is the uh, seat mechanisms to release it and gain access to the third row. It does kind of tilt and slide forward all in one fashion. Uh, so I believe this will allow you to leave a car seat attached. May not be able to slide all the way forward, uh, but it will be nice for those that uh, kind of want that type of ingress and egress or have a car seat in the second row occupants to gain better access to the third row. Now I'll go ahead and step inside the third row. Ingress and egress is pretty good, but immediately putting the seat back, uh, my knees are pressed up against the second row seats. Now, of course, those can slide up to allow a little bit more room for third row occupants. In the back, we have cup holders, USB-C charging, and that is pretty much it. AC vents are located on the headliner. Good amount of headroom. Uh, I would say that is a plus in this vehicle. I would have at least an inch and a half of headroom. I know it is a little bit dark back here, so I'll go ahead and overlay some pictures so you guys can better understand and gain a, an idea of what is uh, kind of found back here. But it's not really a terrible space. My legs are not super uh, at a high angle or my knees are not super high angle versus some of the other competitors in this segment. So I would say there is a good amount of leg room and just overall room in the third row if you are needing it in a vehicle like this. Of course, I would not want to spend all day back here, but if you're looking for kind of a temporary solution just for short trips or something, the third row inside this vehicle is certainly very usable. And uh, that is definitely a huge improvement over the previous Acadia where it was a little bit on the smaller side of things in terms of this segment of SUV. So nice amenities back here. The headliner is sort of a soft touch textured material. And I would say overall third row legroom and just physical space 
is very, very good inside of this vehicle, again, for this segment. Now take a look at the cargo capacity behind the third row seats of the Acadia. Of course, we will find the power tailgate. I'm sure that does have a memorizing height functionality, uh, but behind the third row seats, this is also gonna be a vast improvement over the previous Acadia, uh, where you do gain additional cargo capacity and just you know physical room that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, both the second and third row seats will fold down. You see 60-40 split here, and then the captain shares will fold down respectively. On the left side, you have some hooks for some of the GM accessories. Accessories. There's your speakers for the premium audio system. 12 volt outlet is found back here as well. And beneath the floor, there is a good amount of underfloor storage. So if you're needing that for family activities or anything like that, that will be found underneath the floor of this vehicle. And I go ahead and demonstrating putting one of the seats down. It is a pull and push type of release. And if the second row was a little bit farther forward, that would fold flat uh, to reveal a little bit of additional car capacity. But uh, a little bit disappointing that only the power release third row seats and second row seats is found on the Denali and is not available on the AT4 or some of the lesser trim levels of the Acadia. I uh, would like to see that functionality just for ease of use and uh, all the car capacity available with this vehicle, but unfortunately, as we know, that is not the case. Now, wrapping this video up here on the passenger front seat, we will find some nice amenities over here as well, including some power adjustments. It does have at least two-way power lumbar. This one looks like to be a four-way power lumbar, so that is nice for getting a little bit more comfortable. And there's a better look at the dashboard as well as some of the LED accented interior lighting. Damp glove box looks like no illumination in size, but it does have a very good cutout here for additional space and it's certainly quite usable. So yeah, that's a quick first look here of the all new 2024 Acadia in its AT4 off-road oriented trim level. You guys have to let me know down in the comment section below what you think of it. Personally, I think it is very, very aggressive. Uh, looks fantastic. Love the new styling on both the Denali as well as the AT4. And uh, certainly you have to let me know your pick in terms of which one you would choose if you're looking for a vehicle in the midsize segment or even comparing this to the sister vehicle, the Chevy Traverse, which I have not uh, had hands on time quite yet, but I'm going to do that right after filming this video. And I may make a comparison video just to see what the interiors are like uh, between both the Acadia as well as the Traverse. So that's gonna do it here for this video on the Acadia AT4 here from the 2024 Chicago Auto Show. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and or found something helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel these videos. Subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to stay tuned for additional content and coverage here, like I said, from the 2024 Chicago Auto Show. Let me know what you think of the Acadia 84 down in the comment section below. As always, hope to see you guys in the next one.